Shore Power. 30 amps Shore Power smart plug. The only one I use. I put a 30 amp Shore Power connector on every van I build. Now I got a brainstorm. I'm adding another 20 amp circuit dedicated. This little fixture right here, you drill it through the body of the van just like you do with your regular shore power. There is a male 120 volt AC male plug. See, that's a male plug. That's what's inside that little cup. So what you do is you plug your female into that male and now you take this side, this is just a good extension cord. Use a 12 AWG, a 12 gauge extension cord for 20 amps. Not 14, not 16. Get a 12 gauge AWG, okay? If you're in a campground and you go to the power post, typically you're gonna see 50 amp, 30 amp, 20 amp, or maybe just 30 amp and 20 amp, which is what we have here. Why am I doing this, you ask? Isn't 30 amps enough? Yeah, most of the time it is. Most of the time it is. But this is a dedicated circuit now. It's, it's isolated. This 30 amp circuit goes to the inverter, charges the battery. This 30 amp circuit is for the house. This 20 amp circuit now is up for grabs. This you can power whatever additional you want to use. Let's say you're running your induction cooker on AC, okay? So you're using 1800 watts, but you also want to run an 1800 watt ceramic heater because it's cold. It's the shoulder season. It's a, a brisk fall weekend, or you're in the winter. 1800 watts on your induction cooker. Here's 20 amps, another 1800 watts for your heater. We're basically turning this little baby into a 50 amp coach. Now on the other side of this particular plug, I cut the end off and I put in a GFCI outlet. So what I did here on the inside is I just put in this little outlet box with a 20 amp GFCI receptacle. And now I've got an additional 20 amps for the coach. This little white panel here, we make this little cover on the 3D printer. What is that, you ask? That gives you access to the back of your shore power plug. That's the back of the smart plug. So you can keep eyes on it, make repairs, swap it out if you have to. Now that's where you can plug in your heater or whatever else you wanna do in this van with the additional 20 amps. Not a big deal. This is a very inexpensive addition to the van. They don't cost much. They're waterproof, put a nice seal around it, and you've got yourself another 20 amps. This is the front of the ProMaster. Okay, we've already added this bracket. This aluminum bracket is where we're gonna do our mounting. But if you look back in here, this hose right here is the heater hose going into the heater box at your dash. This is a three quarter inch, this is glycol, coolant from the engine, okay? What we're simply gonna do is cut right there and put an elbow here and an elbow there. And then we're gonna bring that out to our heating lines. Now let me show you those. So basically, this is the manifold that I made with shutoff valves. That's all this is. So that heater hose, let's say for example, here's your heater hose. All I'm gonna do is cut the heater hose that's in the van. Right? Once it's cut, I'm just gonna put an elbow here and an elbow here, and then I'm gonna come down here and here. Okay, now obviously there's gonna be a long hose because I want this whole apparatus to be able to lift out of the way 
as a, we call it a service loop. And then down here, these will follow to undo the van. So right now, this is set up for flow. In other words, the glycol in the engine is going to come in here. It's going to come straight down through here, go to my heat exchanger, and then return up this one and continue on its way to the heater box. This plate is where I'm going to mount this set of valves. So they're right here in front of you. So that heater hose gets cut. One end goes in here. The other end goes in there. And then I make my connections to the bottom, as I explained to you. If anything went wrong with my system, what I could then do is throw these valves like that. Now, when that chassis glycol comes in and it hits here, this is a closed valve. So it goes this way. It'll look here, but that's closed as well. So all I basically done now is I bypassed my system and I've only added what 10 inches, 12 inches of travel to the glycol. If my system fails, that is the main reason that I use my own heat exchanger. A lot of people will ask me, well, why don't you just run your chassis glycol in a hose all the way to the water heater in the back of the van and then bring it back? Well, if I did that, then those glycol lines for the chassis are running under the van to the heat exchanger. What if they get cut or damaged while you're out on the, on the, tr on the road, on the trails? Now you can't drive your vehicle because you lost all your coolant. My way, I'm taking the chassis heater hoses down just to a point under the van, and then I take it the rest of the way with my hoses. If my hoses get cut while you're driving around, we only lose hot water. You can still drive your van. The other part that's very important is however I make these connections, I've got to be able to take this entire apparatus with the hoses and be able to swing them out of the way called a service loop so that the ram mechanics can continue to do whatever work they need to do inside this compartment. If I lock all this shit down, now what are they gonna do? I can tell you what they're gonna do. They're gonna just wash their hands, walk away, and say, I can't work on this. So this is the heat exchanger. You can see where it's mounted in relation to, the, there's the front tire, right? So this thing is basically mounted on a place right under the driver's door. And what a heat exchanger does is this is gonna be the engine glycol. What I showed you up front in the engine compartment with my manifold, it's gonna come in here, go through the heat exchanger, and then go back to the heater box and the chassis into the cabin. This is our glycol. So our glycol is gonna come in this way and exit that way, go back to the water heater in the back of the van. A heat exchanger does just that, it exchanges the heat. When these two glycols are passing through these chambers, the glycols don't mix. They just run past each other in these copper. These copper plates create two chambers, one that way and one that way. So the heat coming off the hotter glycol from the engine is picked up by the cooler glycol because they want to equalize. They're going to keep transferring that heat until they're equal, same temp. Meanwhile, it gives us 215 degree glycol on our side for free, because you're driving anyway, back to our heat exchanger. So these lines are my glycol lines. They're the ones that run all the way under the van, okay? These that go right up, back up into the uh, engine compartment are the engine glycol. There's very little chance of them getting damaged or cut and leaving you inoperable on the road. That's why I use this heat exchanger. Instead of sending the glycol from the engine all the way back to the heat exchange, to the water heater, this is a safety feature. It's redundancy. I don't have to worry about cutting these lines. If they did get cut, you just lose your hot water ability, but you could still drive the van. So this is our water heater in the back of the van. So you can see that the black tubing is coming up through the floor. It's going to go into the water heater, heat the water. Then it's going to exit the water heater and it's going to return to our reservoir, which is going to be right here. That reservoir will hold our glycol 
and then it's gonna come back out through this to be reheated again. So it's just one big closed loop. It's gonna leave the reservoir, go down to that heat exchanger up front, pick up the heat, bring it back, bring it into the water heater, heat the water back to the reservoir. It's just one big closed loop. It works like a charm. You get free hot water. When you get to your destination after driving, no matter how long it is, you've got hot water. So what you might want to do is adjust your living schedule where that you decide to take your shower right as you arrive at a destination because that's when your water will be the hottest. But two of these water heaters that I've chosen to use, they will keep the water hot enough for you to shower for almost a day and a half. Pretty good. Next week, I'm gonna show you a little trick we use to strengthen our running boards. We get no flex on our running boards and I'm gonna show you how we do it next week.